One of the things things that I think most people overlook with microgreens is your overhead costs. And this is what I see with other people uh, offering courses and training is they do not take this into consideration at all. So the vision they're giving you of your profit potential uh, really demonstrates a lack of understanding of what microgreens looks like on the business end. And this is why you really need to be working with microgreens professionals that have a lot of experience. Uh, and so let's take a look at some of these costs to give you a sense of what that looks like. Um, first of all, like you're probably paying rent somewhere. So if you're leasing a space or renting a space, that's going to be a major cost. So this is, you know, this is about as much as our seed and soil combined in this case. You may be doing production from home and that's great. Um, even if you are not technically paying rent, your business should be paying you rent for use of your house. That should be an expense. And the reason for that is you are losing part of your living space chances are your spouse is losing part of that living space and they may or may not be on board. So it's important to, to build that in because it is a realistic cost and in essence, it's a write-off as well. So um, include that in there. Uh, insurance, you cannot run a food business uh, without insurance. Simple as that. Uh, so that's a real cost and that's gonna really vary. Um, uh, so make sure you're building that in and don't run a business without insurance. Did I mention that already? Uh, if you have a website, you're paying to maintain that in some way. You've got your domain, your hosting fees, any up, upkeep, things like that. I've put that at about $400. That actually includes some of your maintenance time in there as well. Uh, phone, advertising, just random things, repairs for vehicles. You know, these things are all, they're real costs. And even if it's your own vehicle and your tools, you are, that's wear and tear on your stuff. That has a cost. You could bear that or your business could bear that. You make that decision, but the numbers should be here so you understand what the real costs are. Phone, for example, you're paying for your phone whether you have the business or not. You require the phone for the business, and therefore it is a business expense. So that's how I look at these things. Uh, these are your farmer's market fees. These filled from the earlier customer sheet we did, so they're already in there. Uh, business license, repairs, upgrades. Uh, I put in $450 for paper towels, $225 for gloves, because that's how much you spend over time. Um, payroll software, PayPal fees, banking fees, really important stuff. Uh, vehicle insurance, vehicle fuel, like this is generous for insurance. And then here's the seed sanitizer that, that we talked about there earlier. So we have $20,000 in overhead expenses here. And this is stuff that you probably wouldn't even have thought about. You're just like $30 a tray, 10 trays a week. You know, it's you're, you're, you're going off, but this is the cost of doing that. This is a pretty fixed cost. Most of these things don't change that much with your level of production to a certain point. Your phone doesn't, your advertising doesn't, your website doesn't, you know? So whether you're producing 10,000 trays or 20,000 trays, some of these uh, don't change. Things like insurance might, you know, your vehicle maintenance and fuel might because you're doing more deliveries, right? Um, but your efficiency in deliveries is gonna go up with a certain volume as well. This is important because what this does is it takes this total, refers back to the number of trays that you're producing and applies this to those trays. So each of your trays costs you $4.45 before you even take into account the cost of the trays themselves. So this is a cost that's really, really important to, to, to add in there. And again, the more production you do, the better this is. So for example, if these stay mostly the same, but we do 6,000 trays, you can see our cost per tray goes down. So that's where these, when we talk about scales of economy, this is what we're talking about, you know, with, if I have five people coming in on harvest day to harvest, you know, 300 trays, well, harvesting 350 trays doesn't take that much longer. And so you're really gaining from that scale, that, that economy of scale. You'll figure out what that point is for you. Um, there's a point at where you get, and then everything after that is just, it's just money in the bank. And that's, Finding that point is where you really find you're, you're starting to be profitable as a business. So don't forget about your overhead costs and add a lot of stuff in there. Um, this one doesn't even have electricity in there, which is about 2,800 bucks a year. Look at that. Totally forgot about electricity.
Five bucks a tray. Before you've even sewed the tray, five bucks a tray. Okay, so that's annual overhead costs. I think I got my point across about that one. Now let's go take a look at crop and product costs in our next tutorial.